day students and a big hello to everyone watching around the Philippines. I am Teacher Mike, your technology and livelihood education teacher. In this episode, you will get to understand computers more. You will also be able to identify the different types of computers and familiarize yourself with the different classifications of computers. So have your pen and paper handy and join me as we build your knowledge towards a better future, one skill at a time. Welcome to TLE9. Let us study TLE. Let us study come with me. All of the knowledge and all of the skills will help you to be life ready. Will help you to be life ready. Thank you for calling Tech Computers and Services. I am Angelo. How can I help you today? Hi, I'm Christina and I'm looking for a computer for myself that I could use so I just could bring my work stuff at home. Sure, Christina, let me help you with your concern. Do you have any particular brands or specifications that you are looking for? Well, I want a computer that is light and I could take anywhere. It must be fast but not too expensive. We have different types of computers that are based on purpose, but from your description, I think you are referring to a netbook type of computer. You may come visit us anytime and I can show you the different computers that we have that you may want to consider. Really? Okay, Angelo. I will pop in anytime within the week to see what's available. Thank you so much for your help. Always a pleasure. Anything else I could help you with? No, that's all. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Pleasure is mine. See you and thank you for calling. Have a great day. It is better that we understand that there are different types of computers depending on how we are going to use them. Whether it's for gaming, personal, or even for business. Computers are here to stay and they just keep getting better and better. Students, I have a question for you. Do computers make our lives easier? I am very sure you are going to say yes. The computer is one of the most amazing inventions of humankind and there is no doubt about that. Thanks to computers, many things are done in a quicker and in a more precise and reliable way. Computers are not part of our everyday lives. We use it in education, business, hospitals, banks, government offices, and even at home. I even remember in the old days when we, your teachers, used to manually compute your grades in a class record. It was incredibly challenging and it took a lot of time to finish. But now, with the help of computers and a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel, we are able to compute your grades easily and fast. It is such a big help. This is why our topic for today is all about understanding computers. So, what is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that can store, retrieve, and process data. Computers can perform complex or challenging tasks quickly, precisely, and reliably. We have three different types of computers based on the principles of operations. We have analog computers, digital computers, and hybrid computers. So what makes them different from each other? Analog computers work by measuring rather than counting, like measuring graphs, voltage, pressure, speed, and temperature. A thermometer that is used to check the change in temperature is a good example of an analog computer, as it measures the length of mercury in the column. Another one is the speedometer found in your car to check the speed of your vehicle. This is a good indicator of whether you are driving at the right speed or not. And even an analog clock is another example, because the needle of the clock covers the distance of the dial continuously. Next, we have the digital computers. These computers can handle more complex computations and process data at a higher speed. It can perform arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and also logical operations. Most of the computers available today are digital computers. Digital computers are either general purpose or special purpose. General purpose computers are the computers commonly used today. 
An example of this type of computer is the personal computer that does a variety of tasks like writing, browsing, word processing, and many others. On the other hand, special purpose computers are used for specific tasks or to solve a particular problem. Some examples are ATM machines, automatic washing machines, and digital cameras. Lastly, we have hybrid computers. When you combine the best features of both analog and digital computers, you now call it hybrid computers. The hybrid computer has the speed of an analog and the accuracy of the digital computer. Hybrid computers are fast, reliable, and provide accurate results. One example is the petrol pump. It contains a processor that converts fuel flow measurements into quantity and price values. In some hospitals, they have a machine called a vital signs monitor. These machines precisely monitor and measure a patient's blood pressure, temperature, heart, respiratory rate, and many others converted into digital form. Students, now that we have discussed the three different types of computers based on the principles of operations, let's have a quick review. Can you help me identify whether the photos you will see on the screen is an analog, digital, or a hybrid type of computer? Are you ready? Let's begin. If you want to check your weight, you use a weight scale. Can you help me identify whether this is an example of an analog, digital, or hybrid computer? Time's up. The answer is analog computer. Let's see the next photo. A smartphone. Time is up. A smartphone is an example of a digital computer. Here is the third photo. A vital signs monitoring machine is found mostly in all hospitals to monitor your blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and many others. Time's up! This one is an example of a hybrid computer. Let's go to number 4. A speedometer displays the speed of your vehicle. The correct answer is analog computer. And the last photo is a scoreboard. Time's up! This one is an example of a digital computer. Students, did you get a perfect score? If you did, great job! If not, it's okay. We still have more activities coming up for you. Aside from the analog, digital, and hybrid computers, we also have other types of computers based on their sizes and functionalities. We have Mainframe computers, mini computers, server computers, microcomputers, and supercomputers. Mainframes are normally used by large organizations. They are like big file servers enabling different users from different locations to access information at the same time. Also known as Big Iron, this system can handle massive amounts of data going in and out simultaneously. They are very popular in big industries like e-business, banking, healthcare, and even airline companies. Known as the mid-range computers, mini computers on the other hand are smaller in size compared to mainframes and above the capabilities of a microcomputer. They became popular in the 60s but almost become extinct due to the popularity of personal computers. Mini computers are intended for a number of activities such as switchboard control, and for dedicated applications for graphics and computer design. These mini computers allow multiple users to interact on a single system and to also control and monitor manufacturing activities. Server computers are designed to process requests and deliver data to another computer over the internet or a local network. In short, it connects several computers together through the use of a server. With the help of a server, you can share files, use a shared printer, or host a network and even an internet game. The next one is microcomputers. They are the smallest, least expensive, and the most used types of computers. Microcomputers are commonly known as the personal computers that we see at our homes or at schools. The popularity of microcomputers signaled the start of the mobile age 
which then led to the emergence of smaller devices like wearable computers and gadgets. Some examples of mini computers are desktop computers, tablets, smartwatches, and laptops. And when we talk about the extreme, the most powerful, fastest of all the computers there are, well, I'm talking about supercomputers. These supercomputers are the most powerful computers in terms of speed and accuracy. They are capable of executing trillions of instructions per second and are designed to solve the most complex mathematical calculations. Supercomputers are also used by meteorologists to simulate weather behavior patterns. Astrophysicists also use supercomputers to simulate events like the Big Bang and other space-related projects. They are also used to interpret new diseases and strains and predict illness behavior and treatment. And in relation to that, did you know that supercomputers has played a significant role in COVID-19 research? According to the National Center for Supercomputing Applications in the article from TechRepublic.com, supercomputers are being used by researchers and institutions to track the spread of COVID-19 in real time. Researchers are using supercomputers to predict where the virus will spread by identifying patterns and analyzing how preventative measures like social distancing are helping. Now let us talk about microcomputers. Microcomputers also come in different forms such as the desktops, laptops, netbooks, tablet computers, personal digital assistants, and wearable computers. Desktop computers are intended to be used in a single location. Computers that you find at home, school, or even in internet shops where you do your research or play online games are just some examples. Laptops are so nice because you can carry them everywhere. It's like your personal computer on the go. Though netbooks may look like laptops, netbooks have less features and capacities making it less expensive. But what makes laptops different from netbooks? If we are going to look at the screen size, netbooks are usually tiny in size between 7 to 13 inches across and for laptops, it ranges from 10 to 20 inches across. Netbooks are great for browsing the internet and doing some basic tasks using the Microsoft Office programs such as Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Laptops are more powerful than netbooks in terms of performance and they somehow replicate the desktop computers. They can have a full-size keyboard which is much easier to type on. Next, we have a personal digital assistant. It is a small handle device where you can store and retrieve information for business or personal use. It's like your digital organizer. However, the advent of smartphones made the use of personal digital assistant almost obsolete. Today's smartphone has a mobile calendar where you can write all your activities for the day. With screen bigger than smartphones, tablet computers are so widely used worldwide because they're very easy to use. They have touchscreen technology, an on-screen keyboard, and some even have a digital pen. And lastly, we have wearable computers. This is a small computing device that can be worn on the body. One of the best examples of the best wearable computers is your smartwatch, where you can receive a message from your mobile phone and so many other things. It can also calculate how many steps you make in a day and can even monitor your heart rate. It's amazing, isn't it? Students, let's again review the different types of computers. Remember that analog, digital, and hybrid are types of computers based on the principles of operations. Mainframes, mini computers, server computers, and microcomputers are type of computers based on size and functionalities. Under microcomputers, some examples are desktop, laptops, netbooks, tablets, personal digital assistants, and wearable computers. Students, it's time for another review. You have 5 seconds to answer these multiple choice questions. Are you ready? Let's start! First question, what is another term for personal computers? The answer is microcomputers. Number two, what do you call computers that are commonly used today to do a variety of different tasks such as writing, 
browsing and word processing. The answer is general purpose computers. Number three, which type of computers are used for solving problems requiring complex calculations? The answer is supercomputers. Number four, which of these computers can be worn on the body and are often used to study behavior modeling and human health? The answer is wearable computers. Number five, which of these computers are designed to provide services to clients' machine in a computer network? The answer is server computers. Number six, which of these computers have the technology to monitor your heart rate and the number of steps per day? The answer is wearable computers. Number seven, what do you call computers that have a touchscreen technology and an on-screen keyboard and even a digital pen? The answer is tablet computers. Number eight, which type of computers are being used to simulate weather behavior patterns? The answer is supercomputers. Number nine, which type of computers are considered the smallest, least expensive, and the most used types of computers? The answer is microcomputers. And for our last number, number 10, which type of computers became popular in the 1960s but almost become extinct due to the popularity of personal computers? The answer is mini computers. I'm sure you scored well in this review. And because of that, congratulations! We all know how computers are helping in making our lives much more comfortable now. My question is, how do you see computers evolving 10 to 20 years from now? So I first asked some of my techie friends about the question, and here's what they said. Computers in 10 to 20 years from now may be ultra thin, with a lighter weight or even a holographic output. Right now, computers are desired to be ideally portable, so I believe that is the direction our technology will be headed. I think computers have changed quite a lot in that time. I also think that the main focus of a computer is about entertainment, work, and life. I also think that computers will be needed everywhere, so I think it will be more portable. A lot can happen in 10 to 20 years, so I say time will tell. Computers are necessary basically in almost everything. So I think that time, computers will be very necessary as eating our daily meals. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Now my students, after hearing what they said, this time I want to hear from you. How do you see computers evolving 10 to 20 years from now? Let me know your answers. Post it on your social media or on your Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash with Teacher Mike. You can post a video or just a message along with your name and your school. It's up to your creativity. And before you post it, don't forget to use the hashtag TLE with Teacher Mike. Students, I'm so looking forward to your answers. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. I hope that you had fun and learned a lot from our lesson. In our next episode, we will talk about the basic parts of computer. And before I say goodbye, always remember that if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. Once again, I'm Teacher Mike, your grade 9 TLE teacher. Thank you for watching Depa TV, and I'll see you next time.